Aerodynamics did so much for the coastal world between 1959 and 2002, and 20 years after their demise, their legacy lives on through their rides. We can talk about the 10 best arrows out there, but I'll save that for another video. Let's celebrate the arrows that have left us. They come in all shapes and sizes, but they're all missed. Well, to a certain extent. These are the top 10 defunct coasters from Aerodynamics. What kind of countdown video would this be if we didn't have any honorable mentions? I considered these, but left them off the list. The most recent removal was the Dragon, a Hong Kong's beautiful ocean park. This was open from 1984 through 2021. This very colorful arrow had two loops and a sidewinder, along with two lift hills and one heck of a setting. Accelerate at Six Flags Astro World looked like one of the weaker suspended coasters, standing 81 feet tall and not using any terrain, and it slowly wound down its course. The coolest part of this was how half the trains faced backwards. I'm sure that was a cool and unique experience. This operated from 1984 through the end of Astro World's life in 2005. The Wacky Soapbox Racers at Knott's was a rare steeplechase coaster, four tracks side by side, featuring less than 2,000 feet of track and topping out at 30 miles per hour. But this was all about the fun of racing your friends. This was built in 1976 and it closed in 1996, so the park could put in Windjammer. Orient Express at Worlds of Fun was famous for its interlocking loops, but it also had a batwing and 3,470 feet of track. I would have loved to ride this custom looper, but I kept it off this list because I heard it was crazy rough. This opened in 1980 and it was taken out in 2003, and it looks like it was on the plot where Patriot currently stands. One more honorable mention, Great American Scream Machine at Six Flags Great Adventure. This is one of the few coasters on today's list that I actually rode, getting one ride back in 2008. This was one of their bigger models, 173 feet tall, 155 foot drop, seven inversions over 3,800 feet. I didn't hate it, but it wasn't the most pleasant ride. It opened in 1989 and closed in 2010, with Six Flags looking for a spot to put Chang from the then defunct Kentucky Kingdom and using this spot to do it. Many people would rather have Scream Machine still here at the Green Lantern, but I would tend to disagree. Number 10, the Shuttle Loops. There are quite a few of these. Python at Six Flags America, Demon at Kings Island, Afterburner at Funspot Park, Boomerang at Tokyo Dome City, Black Widow at Six Flags New England. This is the only launch coaster on the list, and luckily we still have a few that are open. It's just too bad that so many are gone. These are very simple, using that winch launch to push the train off that 56-foot platform into a loop forward and backward, and you get some insane negatives and positives if you sit in the front or the back. Most of these moved around at least once or twice before going defunct, and it seemed like the bigger parks didn't want to keep these around once they got their hands on bigger and more modern stuff. But for smaller parks, they're still great coasters and usually the best ride in their parks. Number 9. Drakenfire at Busch Gardens Williamsburg A lot of these coasters have fascinating histories. Drakenfire is no exception. Busch Gardens wanted a B&M. B&M said, we're busy, thanks to your sister park in Tampa. And needless to say, they really should have gotten a B&M. But seriously, Arrow came out of their element for Drakenfire, almost trying to be like B&M with their elements and support structure, and it didn't really work. Still, what an effort. It started with a wraparound course group, standing 120 feet in the air and surfing as a first drop. It went through six inversions total, with the corkscrew being removed after the third season as the park tried to improve the ride experience. Some people loved it, but most people thought it was unbearable. While Kumba down in Tampa is still rockin' and rollin' 28 years later, Drakenfire couldn't even finish his seventh season. It had the potential of being at the top, but it'll have to settle for ninth. Number eight, Steel Phantom at Kennywood. Arrow really had fun with this one, using that extreme terrain at Kennywood to build around, and what they came up with was revolutionary. It would be a hyper looper. Hmm. Where have I seen that before? The first part would be all about big drops in speed. A 160 foot twisted drop, followed by a 225 foot straight drop, straight into a ravine, right under Thunderbolt. And then it pulled up into its four inversions. These took place right behind the station. A loop, a batwing, and a corkscrew. This opened two years after the first hypercoaster, becoming the coaster with the world's tallest drop. And the inversions really made this stand out. But maybe it wasn't such a great idea. Just 10 years after its debut, Kennywood was looking for ways to make this smoother. That height and speed on Aero Track made for a savage ride. They landed on an option to keep the ride mostly intact but vastly improve it, hiring D.H. Morgan to convert it into a traditional hypercoaster. What was once one of the world's roughest coasters suddenly became one of the smoothest. And ever since 2001, Phantom's Revenge has been one of the greatest coasters in the country. But from 1991 to 2000, Steel Phantom wowed its riders as it beat them up, a coaster a little ahead of its time. Number seven, Titan Max at Space World. I guess you can call this an Aero Mini Hyper, opening in 1994, standing 166 feet tall with a 178 foot drop. Most of this layout looks like it had shallow drops and funky lateral moments, but then it ends with a Magnum style run of triangle airtime hills. 
I'm not sure how violent that airtime was, or if there was any airtime at all. But overall, this layout is just kinda weird. It came out the same year as Desperado, and I see a lot of similarities. With over 5,000 feet of track, you definitely got your money's worth, even if most of that track length is kind of… eh. Space World closed down in 2017, and despite getting brand new trains two years earlier, this ride was done for. Number 6. Shockwave at Six Flags Great America This was the apex of Arrow's looping innovation. Throughout the 80s, they kept pushing the limits more and more, and Shockwave's debut in 1988 proved to be as far as they were willing to go. 170 feet tall, 155 foot drop, and 7 inversions. This was very similar to Great American Scream Machine. That came to Great Adventure a year after. And of all the massive aero loopers, this one had the shortest shelf life. Six Flags was looking for a spot to put their brand new B&M flyer, Superman Ultimate Flight. And they pegged the plot where the wizard sits. The park fans revolted, and it turned out to be the 14-year-old Shockwave that took the axe. Had there not been an uprising to save the wizard, I wonder how long Shockwave would have lasted. I doubt it would still be around today, but it would have been a lot longer than 14 years. Number 5. Big Bad Wolf at Busch Gardens Williamsburg Let's head back to this park for another defunct arrow, this being of the suspended variety. The model got really popular in the mid-80s, and Busch Gardens had a great plot for it. The ride is iconic for its 80-foot drop over the river, but the rest of the ride does hold up. Just don't expect it to be as extreme as the section you always see. The first part of the ride takes you through a village at a decent rate of speed, and then you ride up the 100-foot lift hill for that big drop, and that turn really makes the car swing. The ride ended with a few more turns to burn off all that speed. This was such a fun, beloved coaster, and a lot of people were distraught when the park announced that the ride would close after the 2009 season. After 25 years, it had just reached the end of its service life. The ride was tearing itself apart, spare parts were hard to come by, and the location made maintenance very difficult. I got the ride this a couple times the year before it closed, and it's one of my favorite defunct coasters. For Bolton opened on its plot of land three years later, and it kept those winding turns to start and the big drop over the river at the end, paying homage to the wolf. Number 4. Vortex at Kings Island Vortex over a big bad wolf? I had a hard time with this one, and I've flip-flopped on this in the past, but I'm giving Vortex the edge for being a little more extreme. I also rode this as recently as a year before it closed, and even though it ran a little rough, it wasn't unbearable. I even rode it twice in a row. I wouldn't do that for a coaster that was just stupid rough. The first drop on this really sets the tone, and it's by far the best part of the ride. 138 feet, with a little momentum off the lift and the turn. And in the back row, you get yonked. Back-to-back -back loops, back-to-back -back corkscrews, and then another double inversion with a batwing. When it opened in 1987, it was the first coaster with six inversions. It also had a big swooping turn after the drop, and it ended with a helix. It's a great layout. It's on a beautiful plot. And that blue and orange color scheme is one of the best ever. This closed in 2019, right before Orion was set to open, so its plot has been left empty for now. Whatever replaces it will have a prime spot in the park. Number 3. Hayabusa at Tokyo Summerland There is basically no usable footage of this ride, so I'll just link the TPR POV down below and you can watch it if you want. What else would you expect from a coaster in Japan that's been defunct for 16 years? Footage isn't always easy to come by. Usually, suspended coasters built on a flat plot of land aren't the best, but this one looks different. It starts off with a 125 foot drop and it hits a top speed of over 60 miles per hour. The layout isn't that crazy, but it looks like it maintains the speed around the turns, so it's got the good pacing and the good swing. You have to love suspended coasters with a big straight drop to start, like the Bat and Vortex which are still operating today. I was impressed with the way this one looks. There was some kind of accident on this in August 2005, and the park decided to scrap it after just 13 years of operation. Number 2. The Bat at Kings Island Usually, the prototype is a simple, safe model, and the manufacturer can expand on it. The original Bat that opened at Kings Island in 1981 was not simple, or safe. But holy cow, this thing looks insane. Arrow thought the best ride experience would come with unbanked turns, letting those suspended cars swing, sometimes up to 100 degrees. That's beyond sideways and trending towards upside down. But the force on the track around those unbanked turns was too much, and the ride started tearing itself apart. Two lift hills, 2,456 feet, a max speed of 34 miles per hour, and sporadic operation over three seasons. Kings Island couldn't confidently claim that this was operating safely, so they had to shut it down in 1983. By 1985, it was being taken out, making way for another arrow to take its spot. Yeah, the one we just talked about. The bat will always be remembered in coaster history. It may have been a failure, but Arrow learned that bank turns are vital, and their suspended coaster became a very successful model for them. Kings Island even bought a new one 10 years after the bat's closure, and in 2014, they changed its name to honor the original. Number 1. Eagle Fortress at Everland This suspended coaster is possibly the most sought-after defunct coaster ever. I encourage you to check out a high-quality POV if you haven't already seen it. I'll link that down below. In 1992, Arrow went to South Korea and built the most masterful terrain suspended layout of all time. It starts off with a good sized drop, and from there, it just keeps working its way down the mountain and swinging violently the whole way down. Right before the brake run, there's a rapid back and forth that just doesn't look like it should be possible. 
Everland took this out in 2009 after just 18 seasons, and I wonder if the ride was just too forceful for the track. Big Bad Wolf closed the same year, but that was around for 8 more years. But it may have had the same issue given its location. If I had to pick one defunct coaster to ride, it would most likely be this one. You'll probably never see a ride quite like this again. That does it for the 10 best defunct aero coasters worldwide. Let me know what you think of this list and what you may have changed around. I know I put Big Bad Wolf kinda low. Some of you may have had this in the top 2 or 3. But if you have any thoughts on this, be sure to sound off in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like. That's the best way to show your support for the channel. And if you're new here and love coasters, be sure to sub for more content just like this. Also, check out my links below for my Discord server, where you can chat with other fans of the channel, and my second channel, where I post copyright-free off-ride footage. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.